Hey guys, Chris again from Deer Creek Audio. I appreciate you stopping in. I hope you caught my last video on studio monitors and the importance of studio monitors. And I wanted to go into depth a little bit more about this particular studio monitor that I like to use the most. I have the model JBL 4311. It's an older speaker. To me, it's a great speaker. I've had them for a long time. I've had them for 20 plus years and so my ears are very well trained to them I know what to expect out of them and these were speakers that if you walked into the studios the world-class studios in the 70s and 80s and you know there's a lot of good stuff recorded then you saw them sitting on the, on the councils of all the big name studios there'd be a $300,000 console and there would be your JBL 4311s these speakers were first designed probably in the late 60s. They started out with the model JBL 4310 and it's a three-way speaker. Uh, they have two controls on them, a presence and a brilliance control. We're basically just think of those as volume controls or L pads as they call them for each individual speaker so you can adjust them for your room. If your speakers are a little bright you can go ahead and turn down the brilliance knob and if they're a little harsh, you can go ahead and turn down your presence or whatever. So they could be adjusted to your room. Now realize when you make these adjustments, you're going to be changing the way that your speakers are reproducing what you're hearing. If you listen to my other video about the studio monitors, I was talking about maybe hi-fi speakers might be a little hyped or something like that. They might push the bass or might be really crispy. So you don't want to alter your speakers to get away from what's known as a ruler straight frequency response. You want to go ahead and keep things accurately. Uh, keep things accurate. So that's why you might have some controls to go ahead and, and compensate for that. JBL actually is a company its roots started back in the 20s and they made large uh, systems for movie theaters and that sort of thing and for live sound and then Capitol Records which is responsible for uh, uh, the early label for the Beatles and the Beach Boys and that sort of things they contacted JBL and asked them you know could you guys make a studio speaker for our control room your, your, your past experience building speakers is has been very successful and we'd love if you could come up with something for the control room. They built the 4320 which then they realized well that, and that was very popular but then they realized that maybe they need something a little smaller and that's where they started out with the 4310 that came out in the late 60s and then evolved into the 4311s. There's a couple of different models. There's the JBL 4311A, there's the 4311B, and then there's the 4311WX. And basically the WX means uh, oiled walnut cabinet, and that's what these are. These are JBL 4311WX. Now these speakers really were probably only manufactured for about a couple of years up into the early 70s. However, they became so popular, like I was saying before, the engineers of the time just really liked them, and so you saw them in all the different studios. The consumer speaker that JBL made is called the L100, and basically that was a takeoff of the JBL 4300 series, or the 4310. They saw that the 4310 and 4311 were popular in the studio, so they made the L100 for the consumers and it had a pretty gnarly looking foam rubber kind of front grill but actually it was pretty retro but nowadays if you find some L100s the grill is probably all deteriorated away but they had the same components of these speakers here and the L100 to this day are probably JBL's most successful speaker that they ever built. They sold over 125,000 pairs of these speakers just to the hi-fi market and that's a large number. Today JBL has evolved into their LSR series speakers and I'll cover that a little bit later. They're a very popular speaker in their own right and they're made for near field monitoring. These are made for near field monitoring. These are small enough that if you had that big recording desk I could just set them right on the meter bridge of that recording desk. 
And so you would be as close to them as I am right now. One other thing I want to talk about these, these speakers is here is that you can position them horizontally or you can position them vertically. It really doesn't matter, but I have them positioned horizontally as you can see and I have my tweeters to the outside here. Let me just show you the speakers here. I've got the uh, iconic 12 inch JBL woofer here, the white woofer, which I want to think that Yamaha goes, oh, that was popular, so we'll make some white woofers too. But see, I've got my tweeters and higher frequency speakers to the outside. With the high frequencies being more directional, it gives me a better spread. The lower frequencies I can put in the middle here, They're, they can, they'll be more like a mono source here. But anyway, I hope you learned about the JBL 4311s. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. You take care, and thanks for dropping in.